Hey everyone, Ace of Clay here and Happy New Year. 2019 is here and so is my least favorite month, January, but we're not gonna talk about that. What we are gonna talk about is how I made this guy right here. He is a frog prince figurine character complete with gold throne, crown, scepter, and a whole lot of princely goodness. So if you wanna see how I made him from start to finish, then keep on watching. Okay, so if you're wondering why I sculpted a frog prince, it's because I made him as a gift for somebody that really likes frogs. They collect them, so I figured what better thing to sculpt than something they already love. So, without further ado, let's get into it. Alright, so as you can see here, I started the armature for the throne off camera just simply because, long story short, I didn't know what I was doing. And I didn't really have time to worry about filming at the same time. So. I did it off camera. I'm sorry, I will do a dedicated armature video in the future, I promise. Now I'm just adding clay to the entire thing and to make the armature for it, I drilled four holes into the wooden plaque that you can see and then um, inserted bamboo shish kebab skewers into them to create the frame and then for the seat cushion I used the lid for a business card box that I had. And I'm just attaching the clay, I used a little bit of bacon bond just to prevent any bubbling and to make sure that the bond is secure. Now I'm just blending everything together to get a nice smooth, even surface for the cushion bottom part of the chair. And as you can see too, I attached the bamboo skewers to the cushion with some floral wire, just to kind of reinforce the connection. Now I'm bulking out the back of the chair with some aluminum foil and then pressing it onto my surface so that the back is flat and the front is domed. And once I have a shape that I like, I am just holding all of it together with some masking tape and then I will attach it to the back of the throne with masking tape as well, as you can see here. Now that that's all good and secure, it's time to add some clay to it. I put this through my pasta maker on the thickest setting to get a nice even thickness. And I'm just applying it all over the back of the throne. Smoothing everything out, making sure there's no air bubbles and all that. Now I added some more aluminum foil to the bottom of it there just because I didn't want to just fill all that in with clay and then have it crack or something after I bake it. So I did that and it also changed the look of the chair from like a banquet chair to more of a throne look. And I'm just smoothing all the clay out over that and then adding another piece for the cushion and I'm not blending the edges in because I want to see them. Now this is going to be a button tufted chair and I'm creating the tufts with my large ball stylus here, creating four of them. And then after I make all the initial impressions, I'm going to just smooth the edges out to make it look more like tufts, obviously. And then while doing that, you can see here a bubble formed at the top air pocket. So to fix that, I'm just gonna lift up the edge and press the air out and it's done. And I'm just adding some of that bacon bond for the buttons and then creating some wrinkles with the bottom half of my paintbrush. Like so, adding as many as I think it needs. A couple more for maximum effect. All right, now once I got that to a spot that I like, it's time to texturize the fabric area and I'm doing that by rolling the textured edge of one of my sculpting tools like so to create this nice little fabric texture. I do this all the time. It works great, super easy to control, and it has a really, really nice uh, payoff. Now it's time to add the buttons, and I'm just using that, doing that with um, little balls of clay that I am pressing down to create button shapes, and I will do that for all of the buttons. And after all those are in, I'm just wiping off the excess bacon bond and texturizing those as well. And it's looking pretty good. Now I'm just embellishing the chair a little bit with this nice little rope of clay and then creating more wrinkles at the edge, like so. And it's looking pretty cushiony, if I don't say so myself. Okay, now it just jumped to the arms just magically appearing, and that's because I wasn't recording when I was filming them. So I really apologize for that. Um, when I hit record, I actually hit stop, and I wasn't paying attention, so 
apologize. Um, basically, they're just a piece of wire that I bent to the shape that they're in, and then I added the clay around it, and then shaped them into the arms for the chair. That's really what I did. Nothing crazy. You're not really missing out on too much there. Now I'm just further embellishing the chair with my pin tool to create some nice little details here, and then using this pearlizing tool to create this design around the edge of the back of the chair and the front of the cushion on that rope of clay that I added earlier. More details with my dental tool. And I really want this chair to be as like gaudy and out there as possible. So I'm adding a lot of texture here. Another little design in the front and some lines and little some dental work around the front. It's looking pretty good. This is gonna be a very extra looking throne. And then with a the larger pluralizing tool, I just created that design and now I'm adding it back to the base and further embellishing it. Now I'm just creating some 3D design pieces for the chair. This is gonna be a nice little topper for the back of the chair. And I designed it using the same tools that I used for the rest of the chair and I'm attaching it to the chair with a toothpick and some bacon bond. Like so. And then the toothpick did start poking out at the top a little bit there, so I just fixed that with my spoon tool. And it's like it never happened. All right, now time to cover the legs with clay. Nothing crazy here. I hated this part, but it was necessary. Now I'm just enhancing the feet with a rope of clay and then detailing the legs with my dental tool and the feet. All right, and then you got a nice little shot there of the back and I'm not worried about the back yet because I'm going to bake it and then I'm going to add another piece of clay to it to smooth it all out in another step. And now I'm just adding some more decorative elements here, topping off that middle piece and I attach that using some wire and bacon bond and the chair's looking pretty good. The throne is looking pretty good. Now it's time for the first bake. All right, now once that's baked, while it's cooling off, I'm gonna start the armature for the frog. And I just made this using aluminum jewelry wire connected with floral wire in the middle. And then just bulking everything out with aluminum foil, holding it together with masking tape. Now it's time to add the clay. All right, now it's time for the head. Just a little ball of aluminum foil, covered it with clay, and then inserted a bamboo skewer in the bottom of it to make it easier to sculpt so that I don't have to hold on to the head the whole time. I'm creating the mouth for the frog. Just pinching the clay in between my thumb and forefingers and then wrapping that piece around the head here. And blending it all in, making sure it's the right shape. And it's all good. All right, now once that's done, I'm adding the head to the body with another bamboo skewer. The hole wasn't deep enough, so I had to make it deeper. There, now it fits. All right, looking good so far. All right, now I'm just thickening out the neck area where the head meets the body with another piece of clay and then blending that all together. Really nice. Now it's time for the eyes. And these eyes were a lot harder to do than I thought they were gonna be because it just didn't work out the first five times I did it. This is the first attempt here and that didn't look good. Nope, screw that. Let's try another look. Hmm. Nope, didn't like that either. But I did like this one. And this is the one that I ended up keeping. Adding some eyelids. A couple of wrinkles and now pressing out the mouth with my dental tool. Adding some nostrils and then adding a lower eyelid like that. 
and he's looking pretty good. Now, the last, like, 30 seconds of footage was probably, like, an hour and a half of me trying to figure out what kind of eyes to make this guy. So, it's amazing what a little bit of editing can do. Seriously. All right, now I'm just adding some clay to the wire armature and taking a look at him so far. He's looking pretty good. And let's finish up his body here. And because his limbs are so skinny and thin, I didn't bulk him out. Normally I would for another type of figurine, but there was no reason to here. It's not gonna be too thick for baking or anything. Doing his legs, blending that all together really nicely. And then aside from the eyes, the frog in general was really easy to make. And I was super happy with that because I'm always like super intimidated before I start anything. And when I'm pleasantly surprised with an easy sculpt, it's a great feeling. <laughs> okay, now I'm creating his scepter with a piece of aluminum wire, covering that with clay, adding the ball to the top and just embellishing it like crazy. And then for the little topper for it, I make a little fly because what would a frog prince have on top of his scepter? Probably a fly. So that's why I did it in this little mini fly. And this is, the fly was really easy to sculpt. I did have to look at a picture of one, but I mean, it was kind of fun. Maybe I'll sculpt some more insects in the future. Now I'm just attaching it to the top of the scepter, like so, a little bit of bacon bond. And fixing all the stuff that I smashed. <laughs> Embellishing it some more, and it's looking good. All right, now it's time for the hands. Again, I always say I hate making hands. I hate them so much, but it's fine. Again, I will make a dedicated video to them one day, but not today. And these are frog hands, so they're a little bit easier because they're a little more stylized. And it just sucks because I had to make four of them. Two for his hands, two for his feet, but whatever. It worked out and it looked pretty good. Now I'm attaching the hand to the little piece of wire that was sticking out. And with a little bit of bacon bond, I did the other one off camera, but it was the same situation. I did have to reinforce it a little bit more because it's holding the scepter and I didn't want it to break in the oven and it worked out pretty well. Attaching his feet, blending everything together really nicely, crossing his legs, getting him into his final position and then adding some wrinkles at all the joints. All right now I'm just creating his crown. I doubled up two pieces of clay for my pasta maker. And I'm just trimming all the edges to get the shape and size that I want. And then cutting out the points. And here you can see I'm using a broken palette knife to do this. Refining everything, closing the back. Adding some embellishments. Detailing out that rim a little bit. And then I'm adding these tiny little balls to the tips of each point. It's all about the detail, people. And there we have a crown. I'm attaching it to his head using pieces of wire and bacon bond and pressing it in so that it is secure. And it was really secure after I baked it. I'm coating the entire thing with clay softener to remove any fingerprints and just smooth everything out one last time before baking him and he's good to go in the oven. Now he is not attached to the chair. When I baked him I made sure not to because I want to remove him so that I can paint him and the chair separately. This is a huge time saver and it worked out really great. You just have to be really gentle when you're separating pieces like that. Now I'm carefully removing the chair from the base to make it easier to paint. I mentioned a little bit about that earlier. And now I'm just painting all the gold areas, this nice little mustard co color, cover, and then antiquing it with some brown. And to antique it, I just have watered down brown paint that I add to it in small sections, and then I wipe off the excess with paper towel. And do that for all of the gold areas of the throne. I'm using acrylic paints, folk art brand to be specific. I think there might be some Americana brand in there too, but they're both basically the same thing. Okay, now I'm adding some metallic gold to the entire surface of it to give it that nice sheen. And it's looking really good. I'm really happy with how this turned out. 
but check it out okay now to paint the cushions i'm going with this nice little darkish red color that i made using just straight up primary red and a little bit of black i'm using a small brush to do all the edges and then i'm going to go in there with a larger brush to fill everything in and i think this took um two to three coats to get a nice even color on everything Yep, there's my larger brush. Paint everything real good. All right, now that that's completely dry, the first however many coats I had to do, I'm highlighting everything by dry brushing some straight primary red all over the surface. All right, now I'm painting the base and it's super easy to paint this because the chair is not attached to it. And I'm just using some dark brown that I made with black and brown. And I like the streaks in it, which is why I left them. And I like to see a little bit of the wood through it too. So yeah, it looked pretty good in the end. Now I'm painting the first layer of green on the frog. And as you can see, this has horrible coverage. So it ended, it ended up taking like, I think two to three coats in total. Just coating him really well. And again, I mean, when he's not attached to the chair, this is so much easier. Now I'm painting the whites of his eyes very carefully. I'm not too worried about it because I'm gonna paint the edges of them green. Now it's time for his iris. And whenever I paint irises, I always put like a dot in the middle of the eye just so I know that the eye is gonna be centered when I make the entire thing, as you can see there. So that's a cool little trick that I like to use. Now I'm just adding some highlight to the bottom of it create some more dimension and then his pupils all right now it's just time to carefully paint the eyelids making sure not to get any green on that white I just put down because nobody wants to go back and repaint something let's be honest here so very careful with that finishing them off there for the first coat at least because he's looking pretty patchy now for the shine reflections in his eyes which are my favorite part to do because it just it brings the thing to life i mean look at what a difference that makes when you have those oh, i love it all right now time for another coat of green after the first one's completely dry and yeah, that's a good thing to mention while I'm talking about it. Wait for every coat of paint to completely dry before you add the next one. If you're using acrylics, the paint's just gonna slide all over the place and be a huge mess and create more work. So just be patient and wait for it to dry before doing any other coats. Now I am colorizing his stomach and under his mouth with a lighter green that I made using the same green for his body, but adding a lot of white to it. And then I'm just further highlighting that here with an even lighter green and stippling it all over the surface like that now for some added detail I'm adding some dark green spots I made this green by mixing a little bit of black with the base green that I've been using and they just add another level of detail now it's time to paint his crown I went with silver because I didn't want it to be the same color as the throne I wanted a little bit of contrast there, and I think it looks pretty good. And he's a prince, not a king, so I don't know. Do princes have silver crowns instead of gold ones? I don't know, but in my head they do. All right, now I'm painting the scepter red very carefully with my fine paintbrush. Like so. Now I'm adding some metallic silver to the crown to give it that metallic finish. And normally I paint metallics over black, but in this case I wanted a really bright, intense silver. And that's what I did. Now it's time to attach him to the chair. And I just want you to keep in mind that this is not a method that I typically use. I'm attaching him to the throne with E6000 industrial adhesive. Normally I would sculpt everything as one, including like with the armature, like the frog would always be connected to the chair. But because of this special situation, 
he doesn't have to be because the chair is completely supporting him and I'm not worried about the sculpture not being structurally sound in the end. So this worked out for me. Um, like I said, normally I wouldn't do this, but this situation allowed me to. So just keep that in mind. And I do glue him on off camera, but just to fill you in, I added glue to every point on his body that comes into direct contact with the chair. So like the back of his head, his elbow, his hands, all that good stuff. And he is not going anywhere. He's totally secure. And he's done. Let me know what you think in the comments. And that's a wrap everyone. As always, I hope you enjoyed the video. Let me know what you think by leaving a comment down below. Like this video, subscribe to my channel, then follow me on Instagram and Facebook at Ace of Clay. And we'll see you in the next one. Thanks for watching.